Jibreel then takes Rasulullah through the heavens, heaven by heaven, meeting the different prophets, meeting Yusuf, meeting Idris, meeting Nabi Isa, meeting Musa, meeting Harun, until finally he meets Nabi Ibrahim السلام, his ancestor, his great-great-grandfather. And he sees the rivers of Kawthar. And he goes and bathes and does ghusl in it. And Jibra'iyah gives him a very special fruit. And he tells him, this is the fruit of paradise. And you must eat from this fruit and you must spend the night with your wife Khadija. And so Rasulullah takes from the fruit and eats from the fruit. Then they reach a stage by which Jibra'il and his temperament begin to change. As they start pacing through the veils, Jibra'il tells him, Ya Rasulullah, I can't go forward anymore. The veils, 500 veils, 500 years between each veil, and the light coming from the end is so powerful that Jibreel closes his eyes and begins to cry. He begins to cry and weep, and he tells Rasulullah to go on without him. He can't carry on. So Rasulullah, bewildered by the reaction of Jibra'il, carries on on his own. And as he travels through the veils, the light becomes more and more powerful to him, that he himself becomes so overtaken and overpowered by this light, he closes his eyes, but then he says, my heart began to gaze upon the light until he reaches Sidrat al-Muntaha. Here, there is nothing except Rasulullah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, this is not a physical jinn and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a physical being, though he is in the presence of Allah. And he is melting in his presence and seeing with his heart. And so he approaches and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the state of Rasulullah in this moment. He was so close, so close, this closeness that he was even closer than two bows length at the distance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by two bows lengths or even closer than this that no one had ever been this close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the closest anyone has ever been and Rasulullah is melting in the presence of Allah and he begins to speak to him and asks him Ya Allah, my Lord, Rabbi you gave Moses the gift to speak to you and you gave Abraham the station of being your friend and what do you give me? And Allah here speaks directly to Rasulullah and says, I speak to you as I spoke to Moses and I have taken you as a friend, as I took Abraham as a friend. But what I'm going to give you, I have given to no prophet before you. I have given you the Fatiha and I have given you the end of this book, this Quran that no one has ever received and this greatest miracle. And I have given you the earth and that your descendants will also lead after you. And then Rasulullah sees 12 lights on the Arsh, on the throne of Allah. And he begins to ask about those lights. And Allah tells him of the lights and tells him of the 12th light, Imam al-Mahdi, Ajallallah Farajahu sharif and that he would be the one to complete and finalize this mission. And that he has made the name of the Prophet join his own name Ana al-Mahmud wa anta Muhammad wa shaqaqtu ismaka min ismi Your name and my name will always remain together and your name came from my name so that whenever I am glorified you are also glorified and whenever one wants to say the Shahada they do not say my name without saying your name and so Rasulullah begins to speak in the narration there's a very long narration by Imam Sadiq which tells us of this conversation until finally the Prophet says he revealed things to me that I cannot say but then I return he returns to the dimension of the earth and Rasulullah then takes the Buraq and returns back to Mecca back into the house of his aunt Umhani 